Hey everyone and welcome to a new podcast episode. I am so so excited for this one because I am bringing you in on a real client call. So this is the one-on-one tarot and self-worth coaching service that I've been talking about a lot on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, and through this podcast. And it's so hard to describe how transformative and impactful of a service this is for all of the clients who have been enrolled in it and so I decided that instead of just trying to describe it I would just bring you in and show you what it's really like and I am so so excited and super thankful to my client for allowing me to record our session and to bring you all in on all of it so of course this was done with my client's consent um, but there is a video version if you would rather watch than listen that is available on YouTube and you can find that linked in the show notes below and to protect their identity, the video version of this podcast is, of course, going to cover up their face. So thank you again to my client for allowing me to share this with all of you. And also a massive thank you to all of you listeners for being so patient and being so supportive of my journey as I figure out this first season of this podcast and how I want it to look. And I know we've gone from solo episodes to guest episodes, and now you're getting to listen to a coaching call. So there's definitely a lot going on, but just so you know, we will be returning to solo episodes soon. So for all of you that absolutely loved those, um, don't worry, we are getting right back to them after this call. And for any of you that have questions about the call or are interested in signing up for your own session, uh, feel free to visit my website. I have it linked in the show notes as well. And that's where you can learn so much more about this service, read through all the FAQs, find the pricing information and all of that. So I'm going to keep this intro short and sweet because it's a long one, um, but thank you all for listening and I hope you enjoy it. All right, so we're going to start with three deep breaths. So when you're ready, go ahead and close your eyes. Take in a big inhale. And let out your exhale. And as you continue to inhale and exhale, picture a beautiful white light above your head. This white light is pure. It's full of joy and innocence, full of knowledge and security. And as you inhale, you're drawing that light in through the crown of your head, through your third eye, and in through your breath. Continue to draw that white light deeper and deeper into your lungs and watch it disperse through your body. And with every deep exhale, picture what you're letting go. You're letting go of negative self-talk, of obligations, of restrictions, of resistance. Picture it dissipate and evaporate through your pores. You can give it a color or a shape. But with every inhale, as you draw that white light in, that cloud dissipates further and further. Every inhale is bringing in self-trust, belief in divine timing, patience, peace, and love. And as you continue to draw that white light in, know that it's also encompassing you. It's created a bubble around you you can step into this bubble any time you want. It's always there for your protection, for your growth, a space for you to recharge and step into any time you feel weak or in pain or alone. I also want to take this moment to acknowledge you for being here 
for listening to your higher self, for taking a step of faith. And I also want to acknowledge your angels, your guides, and your ancestors. I want to take a minute to thank them for allowing me to be a vessel, for allowing me to share any message that they want you to know at this very moment in time. I'll continue to draw in that white light. and watch that dark cloud fade away. Take a few more deep breaths here. And when you're ready, go ahead and meet me with open eyes. How is that? How are you feeling? So good. I feel a little bit more present right now. <laughs> good, good. Okay, so um, this essentially just begins with the general reading. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, have you kind of talk me through, you know, if you have a certain question or if there was something specifically that you wanted to get out of this reading, um, we can always start with that. And if not, then you can also just talk me through, you know, how you've been feeling this week um, or over the last couple of weeks. So whenever you're ready, you can just go ahead and start talking. Okay. Um, I don't have a specific question in mind. Um, I think I have been feeling a little bit kind of unsettled this last week. Um, there are some themes, I guess, I have um, questions about or kind of I'm feeling directionless in. <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely have been feeling a little bit kind of like flighty and all over the place this last week. Um, not very grounded or like super... Um, stable in the decisions that I am making. I'm not feeling super sure of them or certain of them or certain that um, choices I'm making right now are kind of reading through to like what I actually want and stuff like that. Mm, okay. Yeah, let's see what we have to say. Okay. Oh, this is very interesting so far. Okay, so what we have for you is the King of Pentacles. Uh, we also have the Tower card. So this is really about revolution. And then we have the Lover's card. So um, essentially with the Tower card and with the Lover's card, those are both kind of major arcana cards. And so what that means is this is about like a bigger phase in your life. The other cards are kind of more day-to-day -day experiences and, you know, things kind of daily ups and downs that you might have, whereas this is speaking to a much bigger phase in your life that you're stepping into. And with the Tower card, you know, it really does speak to revolution and a lot of big shifts happening. And um, just kind of going through this process of uncomfortability is where you should be because you're in this process of change. And like, whether that is, you know, a physical change, like moving somewhere in the next few years, whether that is a career change or just seeing your, just kind of having a shift in mindset that's different. That's kind of what it speaks to is like, we're going through some sort of change here. But with the lover's card, what we also see is, this card has a lot of like Gemini energy. So when I talk about that, I really mean like you're getting in tune with your shadow side, with um, other parts of you that you maybe haven't been seen, haven't seen in a while, or maybe haven't had to deal with in a while. Like these kind of triggers or sides of yourself are coming back and you're like, oh, I thought we were past this, but this is really about finding unity and finding balance and loving yourself in that holistic kind of way. Like, um, you know, sending love to even the, the bad parts of yourself or the sides of you that you wish weren't there sometimes. 
And um, with the King of Pentacles, we also have a lot of talk about, you know, generosity and kind of slow living, communing with nature and feeling a bigger tie to spirituality. So we're kind of seeing that you're being drawn to certain aspects of spirituality or even nature, maybe even solitude. And like these things kind of are becoming what used to be kind of dreadful is now becoming a little more opened up and you feel a little more safe kind of being alone and exploring and kind of going there with different areas of your life. Um, and so it's really giving you that kind of powerful energy to say you are strong enough to look at these shadow parts of yourself and you're strong enough to go there and explore your fears. But as scary as it sounds, you're going to make it out okay. And by doing that, by sending love to those areas, but also not shying away and kind of using that strong energy to explore them, you will be stepping into this point of like a revelation, a major shift. Um, and then what's also interesting is that we have the uh, queen of pentacles as well. So you have the king and queen of pentacles um, uh, together. And so that really speaks to a slowness. Pentacles is like the slowest of all the suites. So it's really about slowing down and not rushing through things and like allowing yourself to be patient. And that can even translate to like your daily routines or, you know, your morning routine, whatever time you have to yourself, how can you like allow yourself to really slow down? And if you have been doing that, just like being present, because even if you have a routine that in theory was slow, like reading or, you know, making tea and doing all these things, it's like, are you actually present in those moments? And so reconnecting to those very basic things and being like, why, did this become a routine anyway? Why do I love doing this? Um, it's really important. And then also with the Queen of Pentacles, there is that strong bond towards like, again, just like nature and spirituality and feeling like you are not in control of nature, but rather mastering it. So everything that comes your way, you're not like, losing control. You're not like, even if you are going into your fears and going into those scary places, you're able to do it through a way that understands human nature, like from a lens that knows that people go through these kinds of phases. And this is just one of those phases for you. And so um, with this reading, this is really the governing energy is having that confidence and strength in a your just feminine side overall, but also in this ability to like, going with that feminine side to receive, to like allow yourself to be scared, but also to receive messages, to allow yourself to be a little shaken off by what's going on around you. But you're letting, it's almost like you're being empowered by what would ordinarily disempower you, you know, by saying like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to be fine and trusting yourself in that deep, deep way. You know that no matter what's going on in your external world and however things might shake you up, you're still going to have that faith that you're going to get through this and that this is all for a reason. Like you kind of have that outer perspective and that like bird's eye view of the situation. Um, and that kind of energy is really going to help you not get sucked into these individual thought patterns and fears and instead look at them from like a the comprehensive point of view, if that makes sense. So I'm going to stop there for now um, and just hear from you. Does that resonate so far? It does. Yeah, I definitely feel like um, a little bit of internal tension because it's like standing on these two tectonic plates and you have like one foot on one and I don't quite have my foot on the other one, but it does feel like there's a major sort of um, kind of life shift that's about to happen. And um, depending on sort of choices that I make and um, I don't know that they just, I guess that the timing of it depends on the choices that I make, but I've been feeling very, um, torn between wanting to kind of impulsively take risks and like really wanting to um get out of a job situation and just kind of um take that risk and take that sort of leap of faith and at the same time have been kind of lulled into a sense of comfort and um 
not only comfort, but also like, is this actually a smart move to be making right now, given the circumstances of everything going on around us? Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely have been feeling sort of torn in that way. So I think, yeah, that definitely resonates in just kind of being, um, being a little bit more okay with slowing things down a little bit and being more patient and um, and at the same time, like trusting that I know what is best for myself. Mm -hmm. So talk me a little bit more through that kind of impulsive energy. Have you been thinking about like a specific decision or just like kind of what's going through your mind when you're feeling that way? Well, I guess it's not really, I guess the specific decision I'm thinking about isn't necessarily super impulsive. Like I have set a date to, um, multiple times to, I'm not sure how much I should say, to get out of this current um, situation. And that date has come and passed <laughs> twice now. Um, and so I'm not sure what it is that I'm hanging on for, you know? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that I'm really unhappy with and that I feel um, other opportunities could kind of better suit me. And at the same time, there's something like, I don't know if it's just fear or if it's this, um, desire to like be led by rational thought or something like that. But there is something that is kind of, um, keeping me from actually cutting ties. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I drew a couple of cards for each situation. Um, so Tara's also really good at like helping make decisions and I've like used it to inform a lot of the decisions that I've made. So we can start with like the more stable choice, right? To kind of stay and like you said, slow down and just kind of be patient and know that this is all kind of meant to be. And it's so crazy. So you got the, the fool, which is really about... I like to talk about it as like kind of connecting with your higher self, but really the fool is like the start of every single tarot card, right? It's like you at the beginning of your journey. So it's kind of, that's why I like to connect it to your higher self because before you know anything and before the world has really piled on all these expectations of who you should be and what you should do and all of that, you kind, you're so much more inclined to just do what your higher self wants. Right. But, um, and, but the fool at the same time is kind of naive and can kind of be careless or kind of be reckless. And so that's kind of something that you want to watch out for. But we do see it coming up, um, in, up in the upright form. So really, I would say that this is more about, yeah, connecting to your higher self, knowing that you are supported, but being at the start of a really long journey. And then I also see the three of hearts, um, I'm sorry, the three of cups. So this is also about like collaboration and trusting in the people around you and kind of having that sense of community and being able to draw from that sense of community. Um, so that's what I see so far. And then also with the with the cups suite, you're also talking a lot about emotions and feelings. So it's more like your emotions, emotionally, you feel like you are happy with the people around you and that you feel like you have a sense of community like you don't feel isolated in terms of just your emotions if you feel like you need to talk through a certain feeling or you feel like you're going through something you feel open enough with the people around you to talk about those things but then um when we talk about the impulsiveness of leaving we also we get the strength card which is another major arcana card. And then we also get the six of swords. So what's so interesting is that obviously the strength card speaks to strength and being strong and making a new decision and having that leap of faith. But we also, the six of swords is specifically about transition. So as you can see, she's like packed up her little bag and she's like rowing across and she doesn't know what she's going to get to, but she knows that she's going and she's already at the point of no return where she's made this choice and she's just moving on. But there's going to be that fear of the unknown. Like she can't see a city yet. She doesn't know what she's getting to, but she's also guided by the moon and the moon is also a card. But I, 
love it being used in this card as well because it really just speaks to intuition and instinct and being guided by just kind of this unknown but feeling so secure in your choice of the unknown and so it's Basically, I would say that the message here is that any time that you do decide to leave, it's going to feel scary and it's going to take a lot of strength. It's going to take a lot of faith because as much as you want all of the answers in front of you, it's still, it, it's never going to be that way. As much as you want it to be like the secure stepping stone, like you talked about the tectonic plates, there's always going to be that leap of faith and that separation that if you're leaving one, you're going to have that fear jumping over to the other, but you can also see that there is another plate there. So you know that something's out there, you know that, you know, you could have a different life or a different possibilities and you're seeing that that is actually possible, but no matter what, that jump is going to take a lot of risk and a lot of trust in your intuition. But it, it's saying that your intuition is also guiding you down this path. And that strength card is also, it's going to, it's going to take a lot of strength, but build a lot of strength also like this change and this shift is a big part of what's going to build you up internally and make you feel strong emotionally as well because you're you're trusting the unknown and you're built like you're also trusting yourself to know that it's going to be okay so um I think the biggest message is yeah again like it's always going to feel scary but at the same time as long as you have kind of an idea of like what is secure enough, whether that is, you know, an emergency savings of a couple of months or whether that is, you know, just having some sort of like uh, freelance projects or whatever it is lined up for the next couple of months. Like you can decide what your minimum safety net kind of is. And no, we don't want you obviously to be in a position where you feel screwed over or you don't have like the bare, the basics of what you need. So you can define what that is, but know that even at that point, even when you've gotten your bare minimum of what you need to feel safe in leaving or making a transition, it's still going to be scary. It's right. never going to feel completely secure, but that's the point that, and that's also part of what drew you to this decision. It's like, you know, that something is, brewing and that something's going to happen, but it's obviously not going to happen if you're making the same choices every day and if you're doing the same thing. So a big part of that is that fear, but that fear is exactly what's pulling you towards that decision. Yeah, oh, I totally agree with that. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that for sure. For sure. Um, hmm. I guess in terms of specific questions to ask, is there like a type of question that is best to ask or um, can it be kind of anything? Um, yeah, it can be like any topic. Um, I would say open-ended is a little better than a yes, no question. Um, but in general, you can ask about anything. Okay. I think, okay, how about, um, I'm trying to think of how to frame this into a question the best way, but I'd like to kind of um, ask about how to best communicate with, how to best kind of communicate with my sister through, um, difficult conversations or um, how to just kind of best communicate in general. It feels like there's sort of a barrier there and I'm just kind of curious to head down that path. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm. Ooh, okay, we got some interesting cards here. So the first card we got is the Nine of Cups, which a lot of this speaks to kind of this ego and um, maybe even like not having your cup filled enough, but then like that 
also adds kind of like this bitterness or this resentment and this feeling to like, I'm not getting it enough here or in these other areas of my life. So I need at least you to understand me. And that like need and that frustration causes that barrier where you feel like, why don't you already get it? Or like, why don't, why can't I already just make this easy for you to understand? And that is what's causing a lot of friction. It's like, I shouldn't have to explain it to you. So that's kind of like the first step is, you know, you can journal on that and explore where that's coming from because that might have valuable information for you, but just know that that is more of an internal process and not actually having to do with her because she's just a person who might not see things exactly the same way. And ordinarily with anyone else new or with a friend, you would take the time to be like, well, this is why I think that, but with this relationship in particular, there's just a resistance to doing that. So I would also start with just exploring that part of it first. Um, but then also there's the lover's card, which comes up again. So it's pointing to in finding kind of your resistance in wanting to in a the topics that you struggle with talking about the topics that you want to clear up or want to have better communication around that in itself holds information about some shadow work that you need to do. And also just what I mentioned earlier, why do you feel that resistance in explaining it to this one person? There could also be residual issues in your dynamic with one another that you haven't dealt with in a long time. And that also points to some shadow work. But again, going to those places and those fears and those insecurities and those limiting beliefs from a place of love and from a place of understanding and openness and just being like, even towards yourself being like, I didn't know better at that time. And I need to forgive myself for not standing up or for not doing what I know to do now. And also realizing that she has an inner child too. She has, you know, reasons that she probably wants to forgive herself for as well. So as much as you want to forgive your past self, realize that she also has a past self. She didn't always know what she knows now as well. And so how can you forgive her in those past moments? How can you forgive what happened before and just kind of shed some love towards those things? Um, but the final card that we see is also the Ace of Cups. And this card is really about emotional, spiritual and creative flows and also about filling your cup. So it's so interesting that we talk about this resentment and this feeling of not feeling taken care of enough so that when it when it comes back to you from this other source that could be taking care of you or could be showing you love, it hurts extra deeply. And what's interesting is that this is all about having your cup so filled that it's overflowing. And so it's kind of saying like, by not having these conversations, by leaning into like this fear and this resentment or these, this bitter energy, you're not able to open yourself up. And when you do communicate, you're going to be able to show that vulnerable side, which is then going to resonate with the sense of empathy that she has for you. And so by allowing yourself to go there and explain these things and just be like, I'm hurting or I need help or I'm struggling. And like those words are so hard to say, but by doing that, it'll hit a chord and it'll be like, oh, wow, you really are. How can I support you? And by opening up and allowing yourself to kind of be broken open a little bit, you can finally take the lid off of that cup and actually allow it to be filled up again, right? And then that's gonna overflow so much and you're gonna be able to have this reciprocal relationship that maybe you used to have and are more used to, this will be a process in getting back to that. So if you do feel like you need to take some time and journal on some of those points, whether it's like making a bullet point list of all the things that are conversations that you're dreading having, and then taking your time through some of those bullet points, maybe like one of those points per day or however you wanna pace it out and just saying, just letting yourself go there and being like, this is where it all started, or this is the one time that she said this to me that just made me want to close myself off. And by doing that first, you'll kind of be able to unpack what it is, separate it from this present moment, and then show love to your past self or to, you know, that moment that that happened before. And starting that healing process will then allow you to be strong enough to have those conversations with her now, or, you know, a little bit down the line. Sweet, sweet. 
Okay. Yeah, definitely helpful. Um, okay, cool. Cool. And then I guess another thing I've been kind of wondering about too is like, um, in terms of like dating and stuff like that, I have felt so unsure of what it is that I want and what I'm actually looking for that I think it's like, sort of paralyzing me in a way because I don't know the best way to find what I'm looking for if I don't know what that is, you know? Um, so it's just kind of all seems a little bit pointless, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and especially with like apps and stuff like that. I mean, I don't really care to be doing that. So it already feels like, okay, if I'm going to like put my eggs into a basket, being these apps, like I better put it in the right one first and not waste my time and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of actually figuring out what it is that um, I want, I guess I'm kind of like, will that always be shifting? Like, is that okay for it to just always kind of be changing and stuff? Or um, should I be trying a little bit harder to kind of nail down like, what that type of relationship or situation would actually look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, okay. Interesting. Um, okay, so at the very beginning of what you were talking about, like three cards just flew out of the deck. So I decided to just put those aside and then I drew the last one at the end of when you were talking. So what's crazy is that A, this is a really strong reading and B, there's three major arcana cards in this, which is wild, but the first one is the Empress, right? So um, as you see on this card, she's basically taking up like all the space, like her hair is big, like she is big, she's full of life and energy, and she is not afraid to take up space. So she is really like embodied and strong and knows what she wants. Um, and so I think a lot of it, well, I'll, I'll just leave it there for now and, and go through the rest of the reading. But then we also have the moon card, which is crazy that I mentioned it the, on the last reading. But again, this is about instinct and intuition and just kind of trusting your gut. Um, but the third card, which is interesting, is we see the Nine of Swords. And again, there's a moon in the reading, which is wild. And um, she is basically laying asleep, but there's swords under her pillow. So this is really about like negative thoughts coming back, negative thoughts or memories keeping you up at night. And also what's interesting is in this moon, you can see that it's just a waning moon. And the waning moon, that part of the lunar cycle is about letting go and releasing and just kind of shedding. And then finally, the governing energy of this reading is the devil card. And as you can see, there's like fire on this card, there's chains. And so it's really about like so much of what you're worried about in, in this kind of setting of love and romance, like there's just a lot of shedding that needs to happen. And um, a lot of letting go of, you know, whether it's past experiences, whether it's previous obligations that you, or like expectations that you wanted in a partner that don't make sense for you anymore, whether it is expectations of other people or like what quote unquote relationships relationship goals are in your mindset, like letting go of all of that is ultimately going to help you find clarity. And it's also going to help you be more present. So again, with the Empress, we're leaning to that energy of being embodied. And I just keep coming back to that word because you have to feel good in yourself and who you are and how you show up and be ultimately present at the start of any new relationship, right? No relationship is really going to thrive if you're coming into it with just so much baggage. And especially if the other person is expected to sort through it. And that's the thing about relationships too, is as much work as, as you've done in terms of personal growth alone, relationships immediately just bring out trigger after trigger after trigger or resurface old triggers. And there's something about like, especially the first year in any relationship that I just know so many people who've gone through it will just feel like they've 
made so much progress. And then the second they're in a relationship, it brings back those old wounds. Like they never knew they had, they had them, you know, like they never had worked through them. And so a lot of this is saying like, what can you shed and what can you let go of? And by doing that, you will ultimately find what you want in a partner and have that clarity around what it should be. So for example, like, you know, have you had any negative experiences in this realm at all, whether it's dating, whether it's like a sexual experience, whatever it is, like, are there negative situations that you've ever been in and just kind of starting to unpack those and just doing some journaling on them. And so again, this is going to take a lot of grace and a lot of patience and you can come to this whenever you feel ultimately ready to do so. But there's so many of those negative thoughts that are kind of at the forefront of your perspective around relationships. And there's a lot of limiting beliefs there. And it's almost like once you recognize them, especially with this card, like seeing that they're right there, it's almost like you can almost grab them. And so once you even realize what the limiting beliefs are, I feel like the cards want you to know that there's not that much work that you have to do after that point. For a lot of people, knowing what the limiting beliefs are, that's the beginning of all their work. With you, it's more just like, once I recognize it, I can be conscious of it and I can dismiss it. And so, you know, obviously, if you feel like there's a part of you that you need to dive into a little more, that you need to repair a little more, you can always do that. It's not saying that, it's not telling you not to, if you feel that like, again, that intuition to go there with a certain fear. But in general, this isn't gonna be work that takes you, you know, a year to do because you're on the precipice of so many of these beliefs. And you've also had enough distance between some of these negative things that have happened that, will allow you to process them without feeling like you are burdened them or under like in that mental space anymore. You've had enough distance to where you can go back and kind of look at it from a healthier lens and be like, I'm just not doing that anymore. Or that's something that I just know I'm no longer interested in. And by doing that again, you will find that clarity. But um, also I feel like this is a good time if there was like a particular situation that made you really angry or if there was even anger associated with like maybe how you have acted in the past or how you've let yourself be treated, any of those kind of heavier, stronger, energetic emotions. If you can write like a page or write a letter, whether it's to someone, to your past self, or just write it in the present moment and be like, this was so fucked up and just kind of let that emotion out a great way of releasing is to just burn it, like burn that letter, like write a physical letter and burn it. And especially if you do that under this waning moon, so that'll be in another couple of weeks. But if you do it under that moon, it's again, just kind of a symbolic representation of letting that shit go. And again, you're so close to that precipice of just being like past it all. And so um, I'm really encouraging you to do that if you can. And also another good way to follow that up is under a fuller moon or under a waxing moon, taking the time to also write in what you want. So take a couple of weeks and if you can on this le next lunar cycle, write that letter of anger, of pain, of everything that you want to let go. And then in a couple, in about another week when it is the next phase of the lunar cycle and we have a bigger moon, a waxing moon, or a full moon, you can sit under that energy and write about what you do want, what you do want to cultivate. And that exercise will also help you realize and gain that clarity around the things that you want to bring in to your life. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Cause I think I, um, have moments where I'm like, oh yeah, it'd be fun to be in a relationship or like, it'd be really nice, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then I have for the large part, a lot of moments where I'm like, God, I genuinely do not want that. And so it feels like there's this push and pull between like what um, it feels should be my end goal kind of, of having this like meaningful, <laughs> fulfilling relationship and what I truly kind of actually am desiring right now, which I don't think is that. Um, so I think kind of letting go of limiting beliefs in terms of um, those expectations that maybe I should be wanting that right now or something like that, or like pressure to, um, 
to yeah be in that type of relationship right now and stuff like that um and to kind of grant myself a little bit of flexibility and um a little bit of grace and like yeah it's okay to actually not want that right now or to um want something more i guess less kind of rigid in my mind <laughs> No, 100%. I think that's exactly what it's saying. It's like, especially if in the back of your mind, you're like, I don't really want this kind of serious relationship. I don't want it to be something where, you know, they live with me in like a month and, you know, X, Y, and Z. Like, if you're subconsciously thinking that that's what relationships are and that you have to have that kind of relationship, then of course the entire process is going to feel like a burden. It's going to feel like, which app do I choose? Like, how, like, how am I going to get sucked into this? And that's totally not the energy that you want around like a romantic partner. Right. So even in shedding that expectation of this has to be a serious relationship, or I have to want to like, this person is going to be the one letting all of that go and claiming like, I just want a fun person who I can hang out with every now and then, but I don't want it to be serious. I don't want, and like claiming that because bringing that joy and that fun into it and having your subconscious mind also on the same page of like, this will be fun. This is what I want. I know what I want to attract. That's what's going to help you bring it into your life. But if there's a part of you that believes all relationships have to be this serious and no matter what, even if I go into this lighthearted, it's going to be like this clingy, weird thing, then of course you're going to so like self-sabotage or have some sort of way that you don't really fully put yourself in. And you, even if it is kind of like a part-time relationship or not like a long-term whatever, it, you still want to be present in it, right? That's the whole point is that you're doing something fun and interesting and with someone that you just enjoy. And so you don't want to go into that with like, oh, this is going to turn into something awful. And so even if you've had that experience in the past where people do get clingy or people do want to box you into some kind of relationship being like, that's my biggest number one is what I don't want to get sucked into. But then instead of focusing on like, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that, focusing on what do I want? So do I want, you know, X, Y, and Z, whatever your desires are just focusing on how you can bring that into your life or even looking into different kinds of like romantic situations that are out there or different kinds of possibilities that can also be something that just opens up your mind to attract what you want instead of just focusing on not having what you don't want right 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 and in terms of um communicating needs i think sometimes i can get kind of caught up in like um, not wanting to hurt someone's feelings and cannot be the most like straightforward because of that. <laughs> and um, it obviously does a disservice to both people in that situation because it's like a waste of time. <laughs> yeah. um, so I guess in terms of kind of what I can do better in these situations to kind of like trim the fat and um, move on and yeah cut ties in a um cleaner kind of fashion uh what can i do to kind of better communicate those needs or like desires or um or to like end something <laughs> no this is just so crazy the devil card came up again and so did the lover's card again the lover's card is coming up in like literally every reading that I've done for you so far. That's wild. Oh my God. And again, I promise I'm shuffling too, but again, we get this negative uh, energy nine of swords card under the, the pillow. But um, the card that is different in this reading <laughs> is the queen of wands. So this is really about like being confident, being strong, being certain in your purpose and kind of like how can you embody this queen of wands, get things done, but do it out of compassion energy. So like you said before, when you were talking about this, you said that it's a waste of time for everyone, right? And so instead of looking at it like, I'm this bad person that has to break down someone else by cutting them off or by telling them how I really feel and having this confrontation, instead looking at it like I respect this person enough to do that. So it's not like you're looking at it at like this weird power imbalance and seeing it as like you're 
above them or that they've wronged you and that you have to correct things like that's kind of a weird energy to come from and that that doesn't necessarily seem like a natural energy for you or kind of like your baseline energy but you are a person that respects other people that likes being in harmony with other people right and so you can pull from that energy and look at it as a sign of respect to say look we need to talk about this like this actually disrespected some of my boundaries or this is something that really didn't make me feel good or this is actually a time in my life when I need to step away for a little bit and so even with I mean it kind of depends on the relationship and the specifics but a lot of times those things don't have to be verbalized but if you're in the kind of relationship where you're constantly talking and it has to be explicit or else something like it would be really weird for you to just cut it off without saying anything, then um, it, you can be explicit and just, again, do that from a place of like respect and a place of sending love to that side of yourself and that side of themselves. So again, if you feel like someone's disrespected you, just being like, I love my shadow self, that means that they have a shadow self too, and that I can send love to that part of themselves. But this is for the, be the best for both of us if we don't continue to stay in each other's lives. So I'm going to be strong in, and be confident in what I have to say and just be direct about it. And what's also interesting is that um, this is actually kind of like a tiger lady holding a cat. And so I feel like a lot of that feline energy is going right to it, right? Like, how can you be direct? How can you be about what you want and not really apologize for it? Like leaning into that unapologetic, unapologetic part of yourself, because that's another big part of the Queen of Wands is like not being sorry that someone doesn't serve you and not feeling like you have to bend over backwards or people please for other people people because you know that regardless of who's in your life, you're going to be enough, you're going to be strong enough, you're going to be who you are, and that no one else is going to stand in your way. So if you have that energy about yourself, people will pick up on that. But also, you can find a way to say that to just be like, you know, I, I need to do this for me. And I'm on this kind of journey. And this is where I'm going. So if you feel like that's something that you can get behind, then great. But I'm sorry, I can't waste my time in this relationship because it's not working out for me. And so obviously, again, it depends on whether it's a friendship, whether it's a family member, like all of that is really going to make some major changes. And we can also talk about that like outside of this call if you want a little bit too, just to get more specific. But um, yeah, just that unapologetic energy of claiming who you are is such a big part of it and also knowing that you can communicate out of respect and it's not yeah like like a disrespectful thing or a, or a thing where you're automatically put above someone else because you're trying to correct them or have some sort of conversation about how you deserve to be treated does that make sense yeah for sure for sure and it seems like a kind of common theme that keeps coming up is letting go, which has definitely been something that has been really difficult for me to do in a um, lot of different kind of areas. And so I think um, if there's time, um, I'm not sure, but if, if we could kind of uh, go down that route a little bit, that would be awesome. Um, in terms of like a question, maybe... Um, I am kind of wondering, I think there's, uh, I've done a lot of kind of exploration of like why it is difficult to let go of certain things for me, but I am kind of um, curious to pose that question, like why is it so difficult to let go of things that I know aren't serving me? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what we can whether that be like a job or a place or whatever. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So a few things. So the first we have this nine of cups, this ego card. And again, this feeling of just like your, the things that we struggle with become so familiar that the, that they become part of our identities, right? And so whether there's a part of you that just 
your identity is kind of in your workplace. And, you know, that's how you see yourself. That's how you describe yourself. If someone asks you what you do or what you spend time doing, you say, I do this. And so there's an aspect of that as part of your identity. And there's a lot of times, even with limiting beliefs or things that seem difficult, we just tend to hang on to them because we see it as a part of who we are. And so it's important to know that you are going to be more of who you are by shedding some of these negative things. And anything that is intrinsically who you are will never be able to be shed. Like that is just a part of you. And so you can unfold and unpeel all of these layers of who you are, but all it is doing is just getting you to the core of your higher self and what is true to you. So, so much of that seems scary. And I actually just used this example yesterday of like, a workaholic, right? Like we know that constantly working 24 seven is a bad habit. It's kind of toxic for us, right? Like no one should be working all the time and drawing all of their identity from their corporate nine to five job. But a lot of people do that and that becomes a part of their identity. So as much as we can say from the outside that it's unhealthy, that person is attached to that idea, right? And so that's just an example of, you know, whether it's people, whether it's places, whether it's a job, if it's just a part of how you see yourself and a part of how you define yourself, or if somewhere along the line, you either thought that you were deserving of it, or you thought that it was kind of like your dream come true, those two factors can also be a big part of what goes into it. Because if on some level, whether it's good or bad, you felt like you deserved it, then that again is, is like you attracted that into your life, right? Like you magnetized it to you because what, because it, something in it was drawn to how you saw yourself and something in how you saw that thing was magnetized to what you felt like you deserved. And on the other hand, if something was originally your dream, I mean, we get so attached to our dreams. And so we feel like if we've outgrown our dream or if we reached a goal and then now feel like we've outgrown it, a lot of times we can feel really guilty for that because at one point in our life, we should have been grateful to have that or to be there. And so it's like, it kind of holds you in this trap of, I should be grateful, right? And you can be grateful for where you are and still want more or still want other goals, right? Like you're never gonna just set one goal in your life if it's a small goal. And once you achieve that, be done for the rest of your life. You continue setting those goals and you would continue growing. And that's part of the magic of life and of being here. And we also got the lover's card <laughs> and we got the wheel of fortune card. So the wheel of fortune card is also about like a lot is going on. Like a lot is happening outside of you. And sometimes that makes you feel out of control a little bit. Sometimes that makes you feel like you don't have a center or you're not balanced. And this is really saying that that is going to continue to happen. Things are going to continue to happen around you in, but a, you're meant to go through all of that. And B, you're going to find yourself through that. Like the craziness of this cycle is going to help you pare down what is center, what stays the same while everything around me is changing. And that's going to give you more insight into who you truly are and who that identity is outside of all of these more superficial ways that you've used to define yourself over time. And superficial could be, you know, a job or friends or et cetera, because that really isn't who you are when you take everything away. And the governing energy that we see is um, the five of swords. So this is about, you know, a, a specific opponent um, or that kind of opponent energy. And like you said, at the start of this call, you feel like you are battling something or you feel like you're against something or you feel like two sides of yourself are kind of split. And so it's really about feeling that opposing energy and by dealing with the opposition, you will find what is true for you. Just like being the center of this wheel that's moving, you will buy everything changing by kind of butting heads with people around you with, you know, feeling upset about where your job is or, you know, having to go through the motions and feeling frustrations around all of that, that opposition is what you need to dive head first into because it's going to tell you what you need. So exactly with the love relationship, you realize, well, I don't actually want a steady relationship. I don't actually have the same idea of relationship goals that everyone around me has, especially in this phase in my life, but that teaches me what I do want. And so that's exactly the same kind of energy in this space. It's like, it's hard to let go, but by 
forcing yourself to let go of certain things, you'll realize that there might be certain things that you don't want to let go of. And then defining how can you make sure that those things are healthy and how can you come at those things with a healthy perspective? Because maybe, you know, you're realizing that this was your dream job, but it's not anymore. And but then it's like, well, do I want to let go of this? Well, maybe you don't want to let go of the industry. Maybe you don't want to let go of the kind of schedule you have. Maybe you don't want to let go of the community. Maybe there is a part of it that you don't want to let go of. So how can you turn that around and let go of everything else that sucks about it, but transform that one key part into something that you want in your life? So it's really about like finding those key pieces of gold and being like kind of stubborn about it and being like, I don't want to let that go. And that gives you that power to say, actually, the rest of this is trivial because that's what it's really about. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. No, that really does actually. <laughs> yeah. Especially with the, um, especially with the job stuff, it definitely, definitely, definitely rings true mm -hmm. for sure. Okay, good, good. This is so crazy. I've never had this many of the same cards come up for a person <laughs> ever before. Like, this is wild, except for sometimes myself when I'm doing my own readings, like the same few cards come up, but yeah, they have like a strong message for you. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the last um, thing that we can do a reading on is just kind of this energy of your self-worth journey, right? So um, we can just kind of, it, is there an area in your life that you feel not good enough in or like you're not deserving of something or in a specific area um i guess let's go down the whole like um kind of relationships area mm -hmm. Okay, so what is a message for self-worth and relationships for you? Okay. Okay. So I went ahead and I drew some extra cards because we got these three cards again, <laughs> this one, the devil card and the queen of wands again. So I drew some extra cards on top of that as well. And what we see is this queen of swords energy. So this card also speaks a lot to not necessarily like the cold hearted. I, I don't want to use like cold hearted because it's not coming from a negative place, but a more decisive part of you and a more ambitious and a more strategy oriented side of you. So there is that side of you that's very intellectual that wants to pay attention to like data points or things that you know are true. And there's a side of you that is more direct, but it hasn't necessarily been coming out because you lead with your heart a lot and you lead with wanting to care for other people. But this is saying that this is an area of your life that you can reach for strategy that you can be very specific about what you want and i think it's kind of calling into question that rigidity but saying how can you do that in a good way so for example we did kind of discover that there are some very specific things that you probably want in terms of either a partner or just a certain relationship dynamic right and so through that how can you kind of be decisive and be a little rigid in being like i'm not going to entertain this if it doesn't fall in this path. And obviously because you're, you lead with your heart so much, I don't think that you would ever put your heart aside to the point of really, really liking or loving someone and like turning them away because you feel like you just should for no reason. So I'm not worried about you doing that, but it's more like, how can you lead into that energy of being decisive and of just being ambitious and knowing what you want? Because that side of you has kind of taken a back seat and it's okay to let her back out again. Um, and just in terms of like how that relates to self-worth, it's really about like knowing who you are and again, being embodied, being 
confident enough, being aligned enough to be like, this is for me, this is not for me, this is for me, this is not for me. And just kind of being able to have that energy as you go around is going to, oh, sorry, is going to reaffirm that, uh, that self-worth that you have, because it's like, it's not necessarily about passing judgment or being fixated on all these things that aren't for you and deciphering, well, why are, aren't they for me? Do I need to try harder? Do I need to be more like this person and just allow them into, it's like, no, we're not doing that. We're not worrying about molding ourselves or changing our energy for these other people around you. So don't go down each individual rabbit hole of why am I not choosing him? Why is he not right for me? Why is this idea of a relationship not right for me right now? It's like, put all of that aside and don't worry about those rabbit holes because you can when you know what you want just follow that energy just be strong enough to go after it and and not worry about being too cold-hearted or too rigid because you you won't be seen that way and then we also see this idea of the high priestess so this is another major arcana card and she really is about balancing multitasking juggling um things and being kind of like a queen of that, a master of these different energies. So whether that's just mastering these sides of yourself, the side of yourself that is more open-hearted with the side of yourself that is more decisive, but also balancing all these different things that you have going on in your life. So, excuse me, in terms of like a love relationship, you don't want that to be your only priority. You're in a space in life where you want to be able to master and balance different things. So a big part of your self-worth is going to come from a lot else in your life than just that relationship. And so knowing that no matter, even if you do find your happy and you do find your person and say, you know, in five or 10 years, that's the person that you decide I want them to be the one or I do want to have a traditional relationship like even if that happened 10 years down the line it's saying no matter what know that a big part of your self-worth while you will get that bucket filled slightly from your relationship so much more is going to come from everything you have going on outside of that and all these side projects and your creative life like that is such a big part of you and so you have to realize that in order for you to feel fulfilled and in order for you to feel enough and feel content, you are going to have your hand in a lot of different buckets. And that can also come from a career perspective too. There might be this energy of like wanting to find that one perfect job or that one perfect thing that's going to make you feel aligned. And it's like, no, you're meant to be multi-passionate. You're meant to have multiple different talents. And if you've been wondering about, should I go down this road or this road? Know that you don't have to choose. Like you can be decisive in cutting out anything that isn't for you, but you can also go down every fucking path at the same time if you want to. And that's okay because you have that capability and that mastery of balancing things um, and you get a lot of energy drawn from that and then another interesting card that came up is the four of pentacles and I don't know if you can see like there's like a little king peering through that window right there and so this card is really about preoccupation with material items and so whether that there's a tie in there between expectations of a partner or expectations of what they should earn or even down the career path like feeling like you're more caught up in just a blanket amount of how much you're making or you know a preoccupation with certain material goods or a certain kind of life or a certain kind of lifestyle and just letting go of so much of that because it's really calling into question like okay if you are making a little bit less not necessarily less than you are now but just if you are making less in general but you're working on your own projects you're doing exactly what you want to do you are just feeling aligned and all of these different projects and work you you would most likely choose that path rather than be the kind of person who stays somewhere that they don't like but is making a lot of money, right? And so it's saying like, for a while, you've kind of fallen into this idea of, but I do want more, of course I want more, of course I wanna be successful. And there's nothing wrong with wanting money, but it's saying reconnect with that part of your higher self that wants to follow their passion because so much of what is clouding your judgment in a lot of these different areas that you're making decisions is this preoccupation with 
others' expectations, what you should have materialistically, what kind of money you do want to make. And it's saying by stripping that away and focusing on what you are passionate about and maybe even making a little less money, but doing that and being able to support yourself on it, that will turn into you making more money from it down the line. But it has to start with stripping away these expectations and getting to the core of what your passion is and what your talents are. And again, with a relationship that can also just tie into like, yeah, how much you, I mean, what kind of life you see yourself living with that person. So even if it is not this full-time live-in relationship, do you have expectations of what a married couple looks like? Do you have expectations of what makes a couple official? Do you have expectations of how much a partner should earn or how much a person should support you like those a lot of those things we might not we might not consciously believe them but there's so much conditioning that just goes into but that's what you should have that there could just be some subconscious seeds of those and so just bringing that out into the light is also important um and then the final card that we have is this card of just the the uh, ace of swords which is about focus and clarity and the beginning of bringing these things into the material world and bringing these things into the uh, arena of like intellect and understanding. And so how can you take all of these limiting beliefs? How can you take all these ideas and actually start manifesting them, actually start seeing them around you? And by stripping away others' expectations, by knowing that you can balance all these different sides of yourself and by knowing that you can have multiple projects and things that can make you happy by being decisive, you will gain so much more focus and clarity in different areas of your life, including what makes you happy. And of course, what makes you happy is going to be a big part of what makes you feel like you are enough, but also it's about knowing that you are enough no matter what, even if you're unhappy, you are still enough. But again, a lot of what your life looks like externally reflects back to you what you once thought you deserved. So it's going to take a lot of stripping back. It's going to take a lot of getting back to the source, but by letting go, but, and by facing those fears, you're able to gain so much more focus and clarity on what your higher self wants on how you can have that and on the actual actionable steps that you should be taking to bring it into fruition. Yeah, I feel like the Four of Pentacles card really speaks to the kind of problem we opened this up with, with the job situation and should I take the risk of moving on and um, what has definitely lulled me into this feeling of comfort and, um, yeah, mainly just comfort is the, is knowing like, okay, yeah, this job has put me in a decent financial spot. Like I'm not, I'm doing okay. I'm doing fine. So, um, definitely kind of figuring out yeah, it's more worth it to maybe let go of some of that security in order to gain fulfillment um, on a deeper level, like weighing that out and actually um, letting those desires that feel a little bit more true to myself be the ones that are leading me. Um, well, all the while knowing that this job has probably put me in a, in a good enough position that I can kind of create a little bit of a safety net you know <laughs> and do this in a way that's not like just kind of diving you know head first into like open water mm -hmm. yeah exactly and and that same idea of like the tectonic plates and figuring out what feels safe for you or what feels right for you like just knowing that it is going to be scary, but you can have that bare minimum safety net. It's almost like you're going on like a hike or a backpacking trip and you can pack whatever you want to make you feel safe. But of course the trip is going to be met with a little bit of fear and a little bit of excitement and a little bit of all of the feelings. And it's going to be hard to think clearly when you're first starting off on that journey, but you can do that clear thinking now and decide exactly what you want to pack in your pack and take along with you. And 
that can include, you know, knowledge, resources, people. So even if you do think about this new transition in your life as like this backpacking trip, what are the people that you want to take with you? Or, and, you know, again, that queen of swords energy of being decisive, like you're not going to just bring extra shit in your backpack because it's going to weigh a lot and you're going to have to carry it around and it's going to be heavy and literally weigh you down if you have things that you don't need. So how can you be decisive in this backpack of, the resources, tools, people, amount of money that you need to forge on this journey, but then know that you're going to have to use that sword and that same decisive energy to, boom, cut all those cords out and jump that tectonic plate. But of course, you're going to be confused when you're looking at jumping into that next phase of life. If you have these cords pulling on you, if you have these ropes tied to your backpack that are like, wait, should I do this? Wait, should I do this? Wait, should I do this? And that can come from the people, the energy and everything that you want to let go on that on the tectonic plate that you're on now, you know? So it's like, take out that sword, cut that cord, but know that you trust yourself and yourself is the most important thing that you're bringing on this journey, right? It doesn't matter what's in your backpack if you don't have yourself being present and making these decisions and thinking clearly. So um, know that the main trust is in yourself, but you have the luxury of bringing these resources along with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome, okay. Yeah, this has definitely helped bring some clarity already. Good. Yeah, that definitely resonates. This is uh, making a lot of sense. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Were there any other like final questions or things that you wanted to talk through before we wrap up? Um. I don't know, just a lot of them apply to so many different um, things that I've been kind of thinking about recently. But um, in terms of like diving a little deeper into um, the meaning behind some of these cards that came up multiple times and stuff like that, like where would you kind of direct me or like, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think I have a couple of like websites and additional places that we can get even more in-depth meanings of these specific cards. Um, and okay, so I, I pulled up like clarification cards on these cards and we got the two of wands. So this is really about like a fiery dialogue, kind of a debate. And so um these cards want to challenge you. They want to, um, if some of them bring confusion, it's about diving into that confusion. So I will go ahead and I'll link those more detailed um, pages that have information. And then from there, what you can do is kind of journal on anything that stuck out to you, whether it's just like one sentence, one phrase, or something that made you feel a little irritated or a little frustrated. Like, wait, that's not me. Like that kind of calling out feeling, you might get that. So it's saying like, these cards want to have a dialogue with you and a debate with you, and they might be calling you out on some things. But also, I think this is actually kind of a sign that maybe you should get a tarot deck <laughs> like maybe the cards are not done with their journey with you and like I've also never had this happen where the cards have like wanted to like stick to someone so much so this is like some strong energy coming through but um if you've ever been interested in tarot like for example there's lots of pick a card readings um online so even if you're not ready for like buying your own tarot deck there's uh youtubers that will and actually I'm recording one after this call which is funny enough but um, they'll have, you know, four or five cards in front of them and you pick one. And then from there, that's kind of an intuitive message for you that your guides are bringing you to. So you just watch that one message out of all five messages or all four. And, um, so that's a good way that you can maybe bring tarot a little bit into your life without feeling responsible for it or without feeling like it's a whole new thing that you have to learn from. But it's saying that like we, are aligned to give you messages through this and tar tarot might just be part of your journey in one way or another. Um, and we also get this um, card, the eight of wands. So this is saying like, this is about 
things moving pretty quickly and things kind of speeding up. So it's saying like, like that Wheel of Fortune card, like the cards of a lot, the Tower and Revolution cards, like a lot is happening around you, a lot is happening for you, and the universe is kind of conspiring. And there's a lot of threads that you might not see that are currently in the works. And so it's kind of like, move quickly, move at your own pace, move. Um, I, get, I guess those two might, things might be contradictory. So maybe not move at your own pace, but just like quicken your pace and move a little bit faster than what would normally feel natural to you. But by allowing yourself to again go there by allowing yourself to um show that love you're again getting like you're on the precipice of releasing so many things it's like these things have been coming to a head for so long and now you're finally able to look at all of them but because they've been showing up in so many patterns it's going to be easy for you to recognize them and start to move away from that so there is that kind of speed and that quickness in your journey and also with a lot of the cards that we got with that had swords like that nine of swords that kept coming up that queen of swords that kept coming up oh, that has to do with a quickening pace so like the pentacles is the slowest of the suites the swords is one of the quickest of this of the suite so it's kind of saying that like things are happening quickly you should jump on this train because it has a lot for you and so um the, it again with like the whole divine timing thing like this is speaking to divine timing and you're in this place right now for a reason and this is meant to be the start of your journey for a reason and you're meant to do this shadow work and let go of these things specifically before you get on this train to head into this new journey and this new path, right? So all of this is like culminating for this specific time. And the last card is also collaboration. So again, the cards want to collaborate with you. They want to speak to you, but also they want you to make use of the people in your life right now. And what's also interesting is that this was the card that came up when you were talking about um, staying and slowing down at your job. So I think this is a very strong message to say that maybe there's one person or a couple of people working where you do or maybe that you met through your job that are still part of your journey that could still help you in this next phase of life so as much as you might want to let go of the place or the role or the responsibilities there are still people in this arena that have resonated you that have become you know good friends or good um just people in your life that you've come to love and they actually have a special spot in where you're going next, even if that does have to do with like certain projects or things like that. So even though this is a lot of like new information, this is kind of saying that um, those cards came up because of divine timing. They came up to tell you that there are other important people in your journey that you should not let go of and that you should move really quickly because the universe is cultivating a lot of special things for you in different places and you're on a very direct path like the same cards over and over again they want you to get this message through that you have to do your shadow work you have to dive into these areas but it's because we're conspiring for something so great and the train is leaving without you so we don't want that to happen so do the work so that you can pack your bag and hop on that train right. yeah um, definitely yeah, there were a couple of things. It definitely challenged me at parts. I was like, ooh, okay, I'll have to think about that. <laughs> yes, that fiery dialogue. Yeah, they, but they do want to call you out. But the cards do that in a loving way. And they wouldn't do that until you're ready to, to hear that message. And so it's saying, like, you've been avoiding this shit for a reason. We know that you're procrastinating, but you cannot escape this message because we're going to tell you 17,000 fucking times until you get it. This is what you need to do right now. <laughs> and they're very gentle and very direct, just like you need to be in this new part of your journey. Yeah. <laughs> All coming full circle. <laughs> oh, sweet. I feel, like, invigorated, you know? <laughs> yes. Good. I'm glad. Ah, oh, sweet. Yes, the juices are flowing. Wow, that was such a powerful episode and I absolutely loved being able to share this client call with you because I'm so excited to share this client call with you because we talked about career changes, we talked about love, we talked about communication. There was such a span of topics in this video and in this call and I feel like so many of them are relevant to all of you. So if there was a certain 
area, a certain topic that you want me to dive into, if there's something that you want me to explore in a solo episode as well on my podcast, please let me know in the comments or uh, via Instagram or on my email. All of those links of where you can find me will be in the show notes, but definitely let me know if you have any topics you'd like to request or you'd like me to cover. And again, thank you all so much for supporting, for listening, for sharing, and for reviewing. I love you all so, so much. Happy healing.